Hey, welcome on in. Julie Donaldson, Logan Paulson, Santana Moss, and joining us a little later in the show, Mark Shalareth. Uh, is going to be sitting down with us. Talk about what it takes to be successful in the NFL. Looking forward to one of the former hogs sitting down and joining us. But guys, we are just about 100 days away from the opening of the NFL season. Got to wait a little bit longer for Washington to play. Now coming back also means for OTAs was the return of Chase Young. And of course, well, he went down to injury last year in week 10 as the season was cut short to ACL. Uh, against the Tampa Bay Bucks, but since then, well, he's been seen around the park rehabbing the knee injury with hopes of returning to his old self that helps him earn Defensive Rookie of the Year honors in 2020. Now, I had the chance to catch up with the commander's captain to see how rehab is going. Chase, good to see you here. Good What's it like being back in the building? Get to see some of the guys you haven't seen in a while. Yeah, man, it feels, it feels good um, just coming back, getting on the field, uh, you know, just feeling that energy, watching the guys run around. Uh, feels good. So um, I'm happy to be back, happy to, uh, you know, work with my team mm -hmm. and my, my teammates and, you know, just really re ready to play, man. I'm anxious to get back on there, so I'm bust, busting my butt. Where, where are you in that? Let's talk about it, because it was week 10, you go down and, we, you know, we see the scars, we know you're rehabbing and working hard, but where are you in that process? Yeah, you know, I'm, I'm running, um, so, you know, I'm in that stage right now, uh, but, you know, it's a lot more to go, obviously. Mm -hmm. um, so right now I'm just taking it, you know, one day at a time and, you know, just trying to, you know, get back on my team, get back running around with them. Mentally, I mean, everything, I, I feel like, uh, you know, when you have a big injury, it kind of just reminds you that, you know, things can, you know, things can happen. Um, and it's, you know, really how you respond. Um, and I feel like, you know, even right now, I'm doing all the right things, uh, responding. Um, you know, something like this, you know, never really brought me down you know, too, too much. Um, obviously, I was sad because I, I got injured, but, uh, you know, I look at it on the bright side. Uh, I know when I come back, my leg is going to be the strongest mm -hmm. they ever been, um, you know, because I'm focused on my leg way more. So uh, I try to be real optimistic and, and look on the bright side of things and, you know, not go into a hole and, you know, be sad and mad. So uh, far from that, far from that. So, uh, but just excited to just be back. There's a lot of mental up and downs in, in this league without even having to go through injury, but we're glad to have you back here with your teammates. Um, we know that's important, and I'm sure you guys will have some good laughs too. Pick you oh, up. Oh yeah, we already, yeah, we already been having them. <laughs> yeah. uh, thank you, appreciate your time. Thank you. And we look forward to seeing you back on that field soon. Yes, ma'am. All right. Here's a look at some key players who missed significant time due to injuries in 2021. Quarterback Ryan Fitzpatrick, yes, we have to include him, injuring his hip in the first quarter of the season opener. And that's how things started. Now, in addition to Fitz, Chase Young was dealing with ACL. Wide receiver Curtis Samuel dealt with a groin and hamstring injury most of the season, and center Chase Rouillet fractured his left fibula in week eight. So plenty of players are really hoping to make a comeback this season and hoping to really be healthy. Um, and we talked a little bit, you know, with Chase Young and what he's doing, where his rehab is. But what should be the expectations for him? Coming back? Yeah. I think the big thing for him coming back is, is just can he get back to kind of what he was doing two years ago? Mm -hmm. I think that's the goal, right? I think... You know, he wasn't overly productive when his rookie year. He had seven sacks, looked like a dominant force, and was kind of on this growth pattern. Yeah. I'd like to see him get back to that if we could, right? And I know ACLs are not kind of the, the, these, like, career-ending injuries that they used to be, so I think that it's very reasonable that he kind of comes back, different mental approach like you've talked about, and very productive this season. Yeah, i love to see him get back to that form, but I just want to see his availability. You mm -hmm. know, I want him yeah. to be available for this team more than anything. Uh, I think one of the things that we have to do as a training staff and as an organization just to know that if he's our future, then we have to slowly get him back to that form and not expect so much out the gate. So I want him to be that guy, but, you know, I don't want to see it just that fast. If he's ready to go, then yeah. let him do what he do. But I don't want to see him throw him out there and say, we need that production from you right now. No rushing it and continue to grow your game, getting back to that form. Of course, Montez Sweat missed a lot of time last year mm -hmm. as well with a jaw injury as he broke his jaw um, and dealt with a lot of um, family issues and, and tragedies as well. So he's back out on the field and we'll be able to see the two of them together. That's what everybody wants. Now, also returning to the field that we never really got to see in full form is Curtis Samuel, but yep. he looks good out there, yep. Tana. Yeah, I love to see the twitch. You know, I'm, a, I'm one of those guys, I had a, those quick twitch muscles, you know what I mean? So when I see a guy who went through groin, hamstring injury, similar to myself, I remember Gary Clark, when I first got, he told me how many games he played with hamstring mm -hmm. pulls and having to put, you know, all type of different icy hots and th th those type of rubs on his legs just so he can perform. 
I love to see what I'm seeing from Curtis Samuels right now. Don't want to see so much of it, though. I want him to just, you know, like I said about Chase, slowly get back into things. But one of the things about us having a Ferrari out there, we want to go mm-hmm. out there and, and run it into the <laughs> ground. So not so fast, but I definitely want to see this man be and as dynamic as he can be. The thing about him, too, is he said he has his confidence back. Yeah. He said even when he was trying before, he didn't quite, he wasn't sure, he wasn't confident what he could or couldn't do. And he has that now, which should resonate dramatically on the field. Logan Thomas, yes. as well, is going to be out there yeah. at one point. Like yeah. he, We're still slowly working him back, but he dealt with injury as well. Yeah, I mean, the thing about him that's so sad is that it happened really late in the season, right? So obviously it's going to impact his 2022 campaign, and I think here is where the depth of the position really becomes an issue, right? Yeah. Obviously John Bates came out and played really, really well mm-hmm. late in the year, and you feel really comfortable about what he brings. But then one of those young guys, Cole Turner, Sammy Reyes, uh, Curtis Hodges, one of those guys has to step up and is going to yeah. play a lot of minutes for this offense, despite the fact that they've kind of transitioned to this three wide receiver set. Or can we say Gandy go? Oh, uh, we'll see, man. He's yeah. got he's doing the uh, position switch, so it's going to be tough for him. But it'd be great. Is to he see blocking? That. He's getting better. Yeah. He's getting better. <laughs> he's getting better. <laughs> That's always the trick, right? You got the tight end. You got the receiver to the tight end. <laughs> you got the I hands. You yeah. just need to like you yeah, know, get in there. It's the mindset. That's right. The mindset exactly. Yeah, right. yeah. You're bigger and you're gonna knock them down. Yeah. Easier said than done sitting from my chair. Uh, Talking about Curtis Samuel coming back in, our team writer, Zach Selby, has a really great article on him on commanders.com about how the wideout is feeling after the first few sessions of OTAs. And believe me, he looked good out there making those cuts, snagging passes from his new quarterback, Carson Wentz. Still to come, we're drawing the line between success and failure. What makes a good season for some of the commanders? And coming to join us for the conversation is former hog, Mark Schlereth. First day OTAs, we're out here in the bubble, and I want to draw attention to this red line here. This is something you don't see normally in on practice or on game fields, right? But this is something they use in practice as a way, as a marker for a receiver who's running a go. He's going to work his release, run the go. He wants to own this red line here. It gives him an opportunity to help the quarterback down the field. And what I mean by that is, like, if he if he hugs the sideline, the receiver hugs the sideline too tight, the quarterback has, has to make a perfect throw. Here, if he owns this red line, the quarterback can overthrow him towards the sideline, and it gives the receiver an opportunity to make the quarterback right. It's just a nice tool in practice for these receivers to have a guideline, a marker, to know where they are when it comes game time. Professor Logs. Professor Paulson. <laughs> Look, I know you You never had an issue working that red line. No, nah, I mean. No, you got that. Nine times out of ten, I'm blowing past the guy. Yeah. So, <laughs> but, you know, later, in, my He's allowed later to years, say that. in my later years, you know, I had to make sure I, you know, you know yeah. get an edge on the guy watch some film a little bit, and then know that I had to hug that line a little tighter. Uh, Well, as you notice, joining us now, Mark Schlereth. Glad to have you, former uh, Hog. It's my pleasure. My Uh, pleasure to be here. Nice to have you here. So we're talking about what it takes to be successful, and, of course, that red line factors into it for these guys coming out here at OTAs, and especially for rookies. So you're here going to do a dinner with the rookies. Yes. Yeah. Um, Santana's going to that as well with some other guys. Like, how important do you think it is to kind of help these guys come into the league with somebody who played 14 years in the league? I, you know, I always think it's really important to you know, to give back to the young kids, but to also let them know what like what actually works. You know, what is it about your career if you want to extend it and stay for a long time? And um, and I always say this, and I said this to my son when he was playing professional baseball, just because you play a pro sport doesn't make you a professional. Mm-hmm. And you have to learn how to be a professional. And the quicker you learn how to do that, and I always had great mentorship with, I rolled in here with Jeff Bostic and Russ Grimm and Raleigh McKenzie and Joe Jacoby and like, you know, Mark May. And so they just automatically took me under their wing yeah. and taught me how to play this game at that level. Yeah. And, um, and so for me, I had that mentorship and it meant a lot to me. It was very important to me. Um, and I learn how to study and how to prepare. And, you know, there's a lot of kids that walk in here that have watched film, but they haven't studied film. Mm-hmm. And I always say this about getting together with groups of guys, like two eyes are, or four eyes are better than two and eight eyes are better than four mm-hmm. and, you know, 16 eyes are better than eight. And so I always had this <laughs> connection with my guys, like, let's watch this stuff together yeah. to see how we can grow together and play together, uh, you know, kind of play as one. I'm looking forward to it because I know it's something that this franchise is really wanting to do is making sure that we are bringing, you know, those that played this game with the history Mm -hmm. under the name of the Redskins as well with our current as we go into the commanders. And it's important that not just we make sure we tie the past with the present, but they they get those lessons and they get those opportunities without cameras to be able to learn and grow and know what it takes to be successful. So let's 
Let's talk about what it takes to be successful with a, a couple of guys on our team this year coming into it. Um, Logan, let's go over to you. Carson Wentz. It's his third team in three years, mm -hmm. and he understands this is basically a make it or break it to be that franchise guy. What does he need? What's that guide rail, that red line for him to be successful? You know, obviously, I think that with him, the big thing is he's got all the physical tools you want. I mean, he's such a high draft pick. He's dynamic, excellent arm strength, all those things you're looking for. But the thing for me that I have to see is a guy who can handle kind of the mental stressors of playing the position. I think those things in Indianapolis and Philly were things that made it very difficult for him uh, to be successful and, and kind of tanked his career in a lot of ways in Philadelphia. So can he kind of... Can this organization support him? Does he have the mental fortitude? And I think if he can do that throughout the year, I think that's an excellent marker for him. Yeah, I think he hit a deal on the head. I think he had to overcome himself. You know, one mm -hmm. of the things about being a professional marketed on the head that you have to understand that it's beyond playing, playing ball. You have to be a professional. You have mm -hmm. to know what it takes to be that quarterback, to be that leader. You know, people talk about his personal or yeah, people skills. Yeah. He don't, he don't, he's not a good leader. He don't have to be. Go out there and win games. Overcome whatever you're thinking. I was a receiver at times that got in a slump with guys who I didn't like to throw the ball to me. You're throwing a little too hard. You're throwing a little too late. But I had to overcome that and say, whatever it takes for me to be productive, to be that wide out that I was, you know, screw all that. Screw everything else. So <laughs> yeah. he had to basically do that. You know, yeah. Put that behind him. I mean, you, you would have been the guy helping protect. Yeah. Well, I, I, you know, with Carson, I mean, it's hard when you come in, you have instant success, right? Mm -hmm. Yep. And it really, it really all unfolds for you. Then you have an injury. Then you win a Super Bowl while you're injured, and you're not part of that. Mm -hmm. And so there's a lot of there's a lot of that stuff that just weighs heavy on your mind. And then you come back from those injuries, and you're like, "Let me do more than my job. Mm -hmm. Let me go prove that mm -hmm. uh, that we would have won it with me as opposed to Nick Foles." So you start to try to do more than Press. you're capable of yep. doing. You start pressing, and then you look at their team in general, and they had injuries across the board. He got sacked 50-plus times in that season. They had a couple of young receivers that, frankly, didn't understand football. They mm -hmm. didn't understand depth of routes and how to layer routes and how to you know play for one another. And so that was an abject disaster. And it's hard, and I'm sure you guys have struggled a time or two of your career. I have. Uh, it's hard when you lose confidence. Yeah. Um, and this game will humble you. You know, they, they always say this about this game. There are two types of players, those who are humble and those who are about to be. Mm -hmm. And it will, it, it will humble you, <laughs> you know. True. And so you've got to be able to overcome those things and, and really focus on what you want to be and, and, and the best way to do that and understand your strengths, but more importantly probably understand your weaknesses and what you have to stay away from. You, you mentioned he had some young receivers. Well, we have a young receiver coming in here, drafted 16th overall, and Jahan Dotson. I, what, Tan, what does he need to do to be successful as a rookie coming in, knowing the expectations are to come in and perform right away? Well, you know, I'm one of those guys. I like to be realistic, and I don't, I don't want to sit there and say he has to go out there and, and, and be our go-to guy because I feel like we have enough guys out there that can really, you know, carry the weight. But you want to see him be productive. You want to see him get into the flow with things and go out there and, and be efficient. Um, so I would look at it and say, I, I would gauge it and say, you know, uh, for a young guy, 400 plus yards is a plus for him. You know what I mean? That's a productive season. But more than anything, I want him to be available, mm -hmm. to be able to go through the season and, 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 and grow through being a pro. One of the things that I didn't get a chance to do my rookie season, I got hurt in preseason before I even played a preseason game. So for a guy to come in here and be productive, if get, make it through training camp, play some games, and gradually see him progress to be wherever that we expect him to be as our first round draft pick. Yeah, I mean, it's interesting, like, when you're the first pick in the, for, for a franchise, especially with a new name, I think their expectations are a little bit higher than that, yeah. right, from a fan standpoint. So for me, like, I, yes, I would agree with Santana. There's always, you just want the guy to be productive, settle in. You don't want the game to be too big for him. Right. You never want that, right? But I think the expectations from the fan base here are going to be much greater than that, right? Yeah. They're going to want him to be the number one guy. And the good news is, over the first five days of OTAs, he's looked outstanding. And I think that's also, you know, bodes well for his future moving forward. My biggest thing with young players is to understand the game. Mm -hmm. Yeah and understand the value of, of what you're doing. And when you're running a secondary route, you want to be out of your break on time. You want to be at the proper depth so you create that high-low separation. You want to be able to, if you're asked to go in short motion and you're asked to run a pick on a slot receiver so you can run a wheel, damn it, run the pick. Mm -hmm. You know, and do the things, do the little things, do the ugly things that don't show up on the stat line, mm -hmm. but do the ugly things that help your football team win. 
And when you do that as a young player, the veteran players take notes and go, okay, that dude can play. That guy understands the game. Yeah. And I think most young players come in, they don't have the totality of what we're trying to accomplish, the, mm -hmm. the totality of the game at all the different levels and understanding the defense and understanding, you know, hey, the hook dropper's got to be two yards outside the hash and, and, you know, 10 yards to 12 yards deep. So I got to draw him in, right, yeah. on my route. So they don't understand those things, and that's the part that makes it tough to be a young player. And that's He's what I think. language, mm -hmm. man. Right. No, that, but, <laughs> but you know what I remember. Right. That, trust right. And, so, and so when you really start to prepare and study that way, then the game, that's when the game slows down for you. Yeah. you go, oh, I see what they're doing. I see where they are. I see what they're trying to cheat, right? Mm -hmm. And that's when you can take advantage. What about if we get to Chase Young on the other side of the ball defense? Um, you yourself dealt with a lot of injuries. I know mean, each of you do. You can't yeah, play this yeah. game and not. Right. And talk about a young guy coming in understanding the game. Like he even told me that he's seeing it differently now, watching it from the sidelines mm -hmm. and where he's made some mistakes, where he can challenge himself to be better. And even calling out like Monta Sweat, like, hey, here's where you're coming um, for things, you know, mm -hmm. and, and how you need to maybe adjust that he doesn't see before. As he comes back from injury, plenty of guys come back and have really successful careers. What is the best success for him in managing that? Well, I think there's, I think there's a couple of things. Having played injured my whole career, um, you got to set your new hundred percent. So you can, you can. I'm not quite a hundred percent yourself out of the league, right? And whatever that new hundred percent is, maybe eighty percent of what you used to be, mm -hmm. it's your new hundred percent. And I'm plenty good to go out and play and be successful with this. Like this is the way I have to go about that. For him, one of the one of the hard things about having instant success, very much like we talked about with Carson Wentz, is you think you've arrived. You think, and I'm not saying that he's like he's full of himself. I'm thinking, I'm saying he had success, and he's like, oh, this is all I got to do. Well, let me just tell you, from my position as an offensive lineman, I am taking everything that you do and I am trying to counter it and I'm trying to take that away from you. Mm. So I am always looking at you as a pass rusher. I'm saying, okay, third down and 12 games on the line, what run, what, what, what pass rush move are you going to, yeah. what move are you going to, are you going to throw on me? And I'm going to set to take that away 100% of the time mm -hmm. and figure I can I, find out what your best is. Mm -hmm. I'm going to take it away 100% of the time and I'm going to make you counter. And what I saw from year one to year two is a kid that had great success being stronger and bigger and offensive lines across the league adjusting to it, taking that stuff away from him mm -hmm. and him not developing his counters. And those things have to be, you have to think about them, they ha you have to work on them, they have to become, they have to become second nature yeah. to you. And that's where I saw a kid that slowed down because he was thinking. You know, it, and it's one of those, thinking is, is a football player's worst enemy. Yeah, like, yeah, I don't, want, I don't ever want to think, I just want to play. Right. Yeah, every time. Right, well, it's the same thing you were talking about with the receivers, right? Like right. That, that level of nuance that yeah. needs to be digested by mm -hmm. him, and I think that's the big thing. Because, you know, ACLs now, it wasn't like when you were here, right. where it was like, yeah. double, like bubble gum and a little bit of string to make it that ACL, right? No, it's like, he'll be fine, I think physically he'll be ready to go, but can he handle those mental challenges mm -hmm. of being a professional at the NFL level. And then, and then one of the things about being injured also, what he spoke on, Mark speaking on, he, I, like I said, I, I'm feeling everything he's talking about yeah. because I remember being a guy that was hurt a lot early in my career. Don't try to just be Chase Young that first first day, you know, and I hope this team don't try to throw him out there and say, we need to see that again, you know, gradually bring him into the flow of things. Once that confidence behind him, once his feet up under him, then he can go out there and make the plays that he expects himself to make. The thing he also said, I think all of you have touched on, is how he's mentally grown mm -hmm. yeah. as well to yeah. the game and, and how that really kind of helps with, because the game has highs and lows constantly right. well, and good. how better he's able to kind of handle that. So excited to see what he brings back on the field. Same as Carson, same as Jahan and a lot of these guys. So glad to have you here yeah, with us, Mark. Pleasure. We appreciate it. Anytime you're in town, we're going to put you on. <laughs> Coming up next, Commander's cornerback William Jackson III is known for his love of animals, but how good is he at relating them to his teammates? Find out when we return. I'm going to give you a name of one of your teammates, and you're going to tell me what animal best represents them. And we are going to start with none other than Chase Young. He a lion. Yeah, he a lion. Terry McLaurin. Cheetah. Cole Holcomb. Cole, I'm, I'm going to say, you know, Cole just real stiff in there, so I'm going to give him a uh, Cole like a rhino. Yeah, I like Cole. <laughs> Cole get in there and make something happen. Your coach, Chris Harris. Chris Harris, got all, he got all the he energy. He wild, too. He got all the energy. We're we going to give him like a, a hyena or something. He just... <laughs> 
he, he, he different. <laughs> he said, uh, you know. You know, and I asked him to describe himself. What, what he calls, he didn't know what animal he would call himself. And I said, maybe a black panther. He said, that could probably work. That's cool, yeah. What yeah. would you say, Santana? I, I, I wouldn't know, but he said cheetah, so it's kind of fresh it's in for my you? mind. So cheetah. You would be scrappy and well, fast. Also, like, you're like cheetah pre-Tyreek yeah. Hill. Yeah. Like, people don't understand yeah. Yeah. what you were doing for the game ahead of schedule, which is pretty cool. Yeah, and, and I get guys all the time. I, I was just telling you yeah. something about Fred Taylor, you know, uh, DMing me one time in Santana, you know, the league. Kind of yeah. like missed out on you because we could have used you a lot differently. Yeah, well, you know? I need a cheetah. Okay, what about your animal? I'm a plow horse, you know, kind of <laughs> patchy and dirty, big hooves, not very athletic. I'm just going to grind it out, just watch a lot of film, and play harder than you. See, and I, I was going to think, think of like a thoroughbred horse for myself. That's except a good one. I don't know that I could run that fast, so I don't know if I just go with a Labrador doodle. Oh, there you go. Everybody oh, wants one of those, friendly, you know, nobody ever gets mad at it. Um, yeah. A I great piece that. there. Yeah. Um, we are, by the way, Donnie Warren is retiring after 14 seasons playing, um, but he also won three Super Bowls and he also spent a lot of time um, in the front office as a scout. So uh, we wish him nothing but the best as he moves on into retirement. And it is Santana's birthday, so we got to oh. say happy birthday to Santana. We got cupcakes here. Come on in. Cupcakes. Oh, you're slow in the cupcake okay. delivery. Oh, happy birthday, Look Santana. Look at that. Look at Look that. that. There you go to our cheetah. Look at that. They have happy you as looked at. Oh yeah, What's I appreciate this? They have you 89 man. if we fit. Oh, oh, oh god! <laughs> Did that just happen? <laughs> Happy birthday. Stand and with that, we say congratulations, Donnie Warner, retired, and happy birthday to you, Tana. And thanks to Mark Schlereth for joining us.